Raw famous. opened up with the Usos and Solo Sokoa coming down to the ring. <laughs> They're bragging about beating up Kevin Owens. No Sami Zayn on the show. Then out came the Judgment Day, and Dominic is still a hardened criminal, and he's talking about being in the pen. Ex-condom! Uh, the Usos are laughing in his face. and uh, False flag. You know, I, I know they didn't mean it the way I read it, but man, when Jimmy Uso was like, he had some line, because you know he's had like multiple DUIs, and he's spent a lot of time. And he made some line, and I was like, I didn't like that line. But anyway, uh, Solo got in Dom's face. Ripley got between them. And then uh, Solo's like, I'm going to thumb you anyway. And then he got laid out by Ali because they're going to do a match. And so everyone split. So we got Solo, Sokoa, and Ali. Five-minute match. They actually they actually teased that Ali was going to end the win streak of Solo, Sokoa. When the Usos and Kevin Owens all distracted uh, solo, and then Ollie hit a tornado DDT, but he still kicked out, spiked him, pinned him, and then uh, Owens hit the ring. There was a big brawl, and Owens stood tall there at the end. It's a good opening segment. It's a good opening segment. Cody Rhodes in his video where he announced at the Royal Rumble, I'm back! So at least around the end of this month, you know, somebody's going to get a, a victory. Maybe if I got a big tat, like right here. Elias spoke to Byron. <laughs> big tilde paying an exclamation point. Yeah, wouldn't that be awesome? Oh, um, You know what? There was a time, folks. People may not believe this now. I bet you there was a time around 2008 or so where you could have gotten one of the subscribers to absolutely have done that. I so thought I'd about it. do it now. I thought about it, but not on my neck. Really? Yeah, but then I thought... What? That was the end of that. So anyway, uh, Byron is talking to this idiot Elias. Elias is another one of those idiot baby faces. So MVP comes out of the office. And he says, uh, and Elias says some comment, and MVP goes, you know, the winner is already determined of the Royal Rumble. This idiot Elias thinks MVP is talking about himself. So uh, he wants a fight, and... MVP says, you know what? If you want to face the eventual Royal Rumble winner tonight, I'll get it done. This idiot Elias goes, oh, man, I can't wait to beat up Montavious. Montel Vontavious Porter. Montel Vontavious Porter. Yes. Yes. Because Elias is an idiot. He paid the price. Street Profits versus Shelton Benjamin and Cedric Alexander. May botch this finish something fierce. It's so funny. Dawkins tries to splash in the corner. MVP is supposed to pull Alexander out of the way, but MVP is like a mile away. And so he's sprinting to get up on the apron. And then Dawkins tries to slow down in midair. You guys ever jumped and tried to slow down in midair? It don't work, especially on this planet. So he hits the guy. MVP then yanks Alexander. And then Dawkins sells it like he didn't hit him. And then they do a distraction. And then Dawkins still pins him after all that. <laughs> God. I'll say this. If Montez was the one who was going into the corner, then he may have had a shot to change last second, split second in midair. But with poor big Dawkins, you, you couldn't do that. And then unfortunately, everybody looked kind of goofy. We had an Alpha Academy segment in the back. And... Uh, you know, Dom's talking about lifting weights in the prison yard. And they're like, you know, you could have just uh, joined our online course. And and finally, Damien Priest is just sick of this BS. Even even Dominic's. He's like, we all just shut up. Let's get out there and work or wrestle tonight. Then we had an excruciatingly, God, this, this Becky Bailey promo. Ugh. The whole point of the promo is Becky is going to challenge her to a cage match next week because Bailey beat Becky with help from, you know, Damage Control or whatever their name is. So that's all they're going to do. Becky's going to go, I want to match with you next week in a cage. But man, they went on an hour. It opens with Becky calling her out. She doesn't come out. Becky calls her a Karen. Bailey then comes out and says, my name's not Karen. 
My name's Bailey. Becky goes, I didn't say your name was Karen. I said you were a Karen. Bailey goes, but I'm not Karen. And then Becky has to explain what a Karen is. You got to you complain to people and you got a bad haircut or whatever. I'm like, dude, what's happening? Get to the point. Crowd's dead. They're like, get to the point. Then they start rambling back and forth. And let me tell you something, everybody. Let me tell you something. Do you guys know what a promo is supposed to be? Do you know what a promo is supposed to be? I do. Let me help you. There's one person, and then there's another person. Could be male, female. Could even be teams. But they're going to have a verbal battle that is designed to make you want to see them fight. And preferably, you not only want to see them fight, but you want one of them to beat the ass of the other. That's the idea behind a promo. I understand that everything that they said in this promo was true. They're talking about NXT and 2015 and Bailey peaked in 2015 and and Becky was never supposed to be the man but she was and Bailey's like it's cuz you got punched by another woman and it's like yeah it's all true who cares i don't care i don't care what happened in NXT i don't care why Becky got over it doesn't matter why should I care about you two fighting? Well, actually, the answer is simple. I should care because I'm supposed to like Becky. I'm supposed to dislike Bailey. Bailey beat Becky by cheating. And I'm supposed to want Becky to get her revenge on Bailey for what she did. They barely addressed any of that. We're talking about a bunch of stupid history, which again is true, but it doesn't matter. And I, you know what? I bring it up because I've seen this a lot lately in promos. It's like two people come out. They start talking about history. They start bringing up stuff from the past. It's like good in the sense that, yeah, they deliver it well. Maybe they have passion behind what they're saying. But who cares? What does it have to do with you two having a match together? So God, this killed me. And I was even more infuriated because you could have done it right. There's a reason Becky wants a cage match. There's a reason she wants revenge. There's a reason we're not supposed to like Bailey. There's a reason why we want to get rid of her henchwoman. But they didn't do any of that. It was all a bunch of crap from 2015. Who cares? Then, Elias faced Omos, who was not MVP. Omos killed him. And it was over. Thank God Omos has returned. Thank God. So you know Vince is back. Yes, I am losing my voice again. And I don't care about agitating your cat. Put your cat away during the show. You know I'm going to yell. What? You're surprised I'm yelling on Observer Live? Are you new? So he gets his strength back, by the way. You got to get them vocal cords back up. Come on, boss. Yell at him. Damian Priest and Dominic Mysterio beat Alpha Academy. 11 minutes. Good match. Bro, They got. I hate to say it because I like the act and everything like that, but they got to have Otis split off and go babyface. No, face. no, no, no. Just babyface together. No. Come on. Super no, Porky. Man, Chad talking to the kids. He's the American room. Super Porky. Bro. Everybody loves him. You can do it together, man. No, here's the problem, Mike. Somebody's got to give him the food, man. It's like here's, David Spade no, and Chris Here's Farley. the problem. Oh. Okay? Man. Chad Gable can be a main event act. Otis, God now? bless him. Otis is is Wait a is best served as American Super Porky. I he agree. goes out. He I does agree. the same thing. Yes. It's always an undercard person. He always wins, and he always makes everybody happy. Gable can be so much more. I love Chad Gable, but you know he's not going to be so much more. He so can make be them a super popular team that people want to see. I'll take that instead. And so, uh, 
Dom got the win thanks to Priest, but then they celebrate like Dom had accomplished something. I like this match a lot. And man, the people loved old Porky. Then he tried to do his worm into an elbow, but he, oh, he no. stumbled, and so he just fell on the guy. That was Made it even better. <laughs> Made it even better. He shook and he fell. Me, hey, him. I, I, I was actually worried about his health, but then he got right back up, so then I wasn't worried. About yeah, it. the Jakey leg. It's like, yeah, that was, uh, wasn't sure what that was. We had uh, Mia Yim beating Io Sky four minutes. It was fine. Nobody cared. It was just in and out. So that's Meechin. Then we had Bianca and Alexa. See, this, even though I hated the ending because it was so stupid, this was largely done right. It was like Bianca got beat up by Alexa. Bianca comes out and goes, You talked a lot of trash last week. Come out and say it to my face. Alexa comes out to say it to her face, and Bianca changes her mind. I don't want to hear it again. I want to beat you up. You want a match at the Rumble? Alexa says, sure. Bianca's like, great. It's signed. Now, I want to beat your ass now. So then they get in a huge fight, and everything was fine. But then Uncle Howdy is dancing by concessions, and Bianca's distracted by what? I don't even know what. Man. And then she gets DDT'd, and it was it was so dumb. <laughs> this stuff is so dumb. Blue smoke and light. That's what she was. Uh... <laughs> Bronson Reed murdered Akira Tozawa. He murdered him. This was a murder on national television. And I loved it. But I hope Tozawa was okay. And then Bobby Lashley ended up beating everybody else in a six-pack challenge. He gets a shot at uh, Theory next week. And I'm going to tell you what's going on after the break. Observer Live. Watch that uh, main event last night. Yeah. It was actually very, very clever what they did. Because Lashley is out there as a total baby face. People are cheering for him. They love the guy. And then out comes MVP and Omos to screw everything up. And everything that they do is heelish and diabolical. Yet everything that happened that they were involved in just happened to inadvertently help Lashley win this match. So, love that. I'm not sure if it's happening next week, but it is inevitable that Bobby Lashley is turning heel and the Hurt Business will be reuniting with the addition of Omos. And, uh, man, he, he was never slow part building of a, it. Was never part of a Hurt Business with Omos. It's like Ralph Trezvant and. And, and and Bobby Brown getting together with Johnny Gill in this new edition. But did you know that in January, WWE presents the Royal Rumble on the show will be what is being called a pitch black match. Why, you ask? Well, Mountain Dew apparently has a drink called Mountain Dew Pitch Black. And they got a lot of money. If it's all blacked out and nothing happens, we're actually the winners because, you know, we don't have to actually watch it. Jared, put a black thing on the screen here. It's It would be like if the match was like this for 10 minutes, and all you heard was, oh, ow, boom. Oh. No, Mike, stop it. If you enjoy these videos for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.